Right, well, here is the start of today's adventure. Where are we? In the bracken. Heading for another wild camp and somewhere a little special. I don't know why this place is not uh, photographed very much because it is a beautiful location. Um, Wise Een Tarn is the location for today's wild camp um, near Hawkshead and Estuate Water. Um, and to get to it, you've got to go past Moss Eccles Town. Now take a look at this. Da, da, da. <laughs> Definitely got serious potential for sunrise tomorrow because the sun will be rising over there. All the most lilies close up at night. Uh, there'll still be all the buds. Could be really nice. So just trying to find some with a nice composition. So quite like these two here. Um, quite nice. Then there's one just uh, budding behind it and a bit of grass just sort of almost framing it, which looks quite nice. I've just been waiting for the sun to come and go, making sure you don't overexpose the white lilies. So it's really trying to focus in on the the white bit really and setting the exposure right and then trying to still think about the composition, um, seeing whether we want the background blurred or not and set the aperture accordingly. So um, have a wander around these lilies, I mean they're just fantastic, they're just gorgeous. Um, so I'm just going to have a good look around and see if we can find some decent compositions in amongst them with some budding flowers. Right, I've just been uh, where I had my feet paddling there as a little uh, like makeshift dam. And as I came back up, I just turned around to have a look, and there's quite a nice composition here, I think. Uh, let me see if I can turn this around and show you. Right, this is where I was uh, paddling before, and I think there's uh, potentially quite a nice composition here. Uh, not for now, um, albeit I have just got the infrared camera out and had a look, and it looks quite nice.
got this lovely um, S of the um, sort of this little makeshift down wall. Uh, it takes you up to this nice group of trees. There's lovely reflection in the water just here, uh, and then there's another lovely tree just uh, over here. Ooh, there. <laughs> So I'll have a look what it looks like in infrared and put that up. I think it could be quite nice. But again, it's maybe one for the morning. Uh, sun will be coming up behind these trees, I think. Uh, it might be quite nice backlit uh, with the water still and you know the reflection is quite strong. So I'll come back to this, but uh, quite a nice little scene actually. And uh, one with a, a definite bit of potential. Right, so we've done, uh, had a good look around Moss Eccles. Um, short little fodder now over the top of another little mound and then a decision do we stick or switch that's tonight's date <laughs> I do like a walk where they sort of blindsided by the view until you get there and then all of a sudden the view opens up just wait till you see this Look at that. Okay, I'm just going to show you around some of the sort of longer range elements of this uh, lovely little tarn uh, from the top of the hill and then probably be walking down here to uh, have a look a bit closer to the water's edge because things do change quite significantly. So you see you've got some nice um, single trees on the um, sort of spread out trees on the hill above uh, the tarn. Nearest to me here you've got this big larch tree which is quite a, um, an imposing bit of foreground probably a bit much and then you can probably see in the distance there if I zoom in the boat house. So that's uh, interesting depending on how far you want to zoom in composition wise. You've got this copse of trees here um, and you can just see some reflections. If I move further to the right, I've just stood here at the minute so you can see the boathouse, but as I move further to the right those reflections become more prominent. And then you've got another little copse of trees there which are nice. Again you can see the reflection from here. They don't really work from this angle, but if you go down onto the water's edge here, probably they become more into play there and the reflections will be much more prominent. Uh, and the boathouse there might be visible behind this copse of trees. And in the distance, of course, you've got uh, the Langdale Pikes, <coughs> which, um, you know, hopefully in the morning will get lit up, albeit it is a bit of a thundery forecast. So I don't know. So um, that could be a bit uh, lively. Uh, the other thing I should have mentioned is in this bit here, it's a bit hard to pick up, but there is a, a leading river. I'll move across to the right in a minute and you should be able to see it a bit better, which can be used as a leading line into the tarn, particularly when shooting in portrait orientation. I'll see if I can just mosey over here a bit. Um, it becomes a bit more prominent the more we move across. Sorry about this. Okay, so here it is. It's not uh, massively prominent, but you can see it's enough detail in it, particularly shooting in portrait orientation, to have that lined up nicely with that copse of trees. You've got some, a very prominent pine tree there on that side, and you've got the boat house with the Langdale Pikes in the distance, and uh, some of the other Lakeland Fells over, over to this side. So all in all, just a superb vista and one which as I said I've said several times you don't see a lot of well the tent's up look how hot it is it must be about a million degrees I am exaggerating slightly of course I've had to strip off but uh, it is chuffing hot I have got some shorts on by the way just in case you're worried so we're <coughs> gonna head over to uh, down by the water's edge. I mentioned uh, different compositions down there. So we'll go over and have a look down there. 
and then uh, we'll see what it looks like and see if there's some good setups down there. I fancy it could be good in for red sharks with these clumps of trees, but uh, we'll see what it's like when we get down there. Right, I've moved a little bit around the path, and you see now we've got completely different compositions. So we've got probably one shot here with this uh, boat house and the copse of trees, the tall trees on the left, and the layers of mountains behind. Some nice reflections in the water. And then I really like this copse of trees here as well. They're a bit hard to see. It might be better down near the water level. The trouble is with that, the lower down you get, the more the mountains are going to disappear. So it's a tricky balancing act that between the trees not disappearing with the background trees, making them hard to see, and not getting too low that the mountains disappear. So that might not be a shot, um, but this one here definitely is. Um, could do a panel maybe, but I'm not too happy with this right hand side of the image, but I might try one just to see what it looks like. The thing I sort of like about down here is that the, as you lose sort of one of the compositional elements by moving, uh, other aspects come into play. So the trees on the left now don't work, sort of uh, blocked out with the other trees behind them on the uh, background. The boathouse is becoming less significant, but the trees on the right are now becoming fairly more significant and starting to stand out a bit, albeit not from here, but we've also got some lovely grass in the uh, foreground here, like reedy grass, which might uh, make some interesting foreground. Uh, right, I've just moved down the bank in about uh, well, 10 or 15 yards, and you see everything starts to come together a bit better here. You've got this lovely grass in the foreground, you've got the boathouse on the left. The trees now are in between the two sort of um, distinctive mountain ranges in the distance and it works a lot more balanced and the reflections you can see in the water as well so i'll um i'll take it out and take a record shot it's a really bright sun and we're shooting directly into the sun so i'm sure it'll be quite bright this but um, um i'll have a look and uh, it'll give you an idea about the composition anyway if nothing else so I've come down the bottom of the lake, um, Tarn, just near the uh, trees at the bottom. There is a nice spell of water here which gives clear reflections of this group of trees. But as you can see from that reflection, it is shooting directly into really, really bright sunlight. Uh, one thing infrared doesn't like is pointing directly into the sun. Hates it, you end up with flares all over the spot, you can't control it. So I've tried to shoot a shot um, at F22. So if you can get like a reflected sun flare uh, with this scene and the tree, might work in black and white. It's very, very bright though. I mean, it's probably the brightest it's been all day. So quite tricky to control this and get enough detail in the shadows. Really, there's going to be very few details in the shadows. Well, I'll give it a go and I'll tuck it up and see what it looks like. But the sun star didn't look good, so I opted for this mono instead. Right, I don't know what this is all about. I've been here plenty of times and this has never been locked. It's now saying it's private with no public access. Padlocked. This is the gate that gets you onto the end of the uh, town, the wall that walks along to the boathouse. And it's now no longer accessible. So I'll take back what I said about this little town and now I hate it with a passion. If this was in Channel 4 in the 1980s, this film would have a red triangle at the top now because it's about to get very very raunchy and very hot and steamy and I'm going to strip off.
Billet, let's go. I can't even begin to tell you how refreshing that was. That was gorgeous. Hot and sticky and horrible and sweaty and just jumping in there. Feel completely refreshed now. Probably have one in the morning as well, I think. If it's uh, as hot and muggy as it's going to be tonight. Anyway, looks like the clouds rolling in over there. It's looking promising for sunset. So, get my stuff together and uh, head back towards the tent and see what the uh, clouds are doing. But uh, it's starting to look quite promising. Okay, I just finished the swimming and uh, noticed this shot before, if you remember, uh, with this leading line coming in. We've got the late uh, sun now, just causing, hitting these um, larch trees over there. And uh, is that a, an oak tree over there? No, maybe it isn't. But uh, lovely afternoon light, late light on it. Uh, just casting these lovely, blue shadows and reflections really nice I love the warm tones to this image and the sight of the farmer just appearing over the hill adds a small element of detail that also tells a story of this scene right I came back to this um, opted on this one for sunset and eh, eh, it's a big no-no um, Took a couple of shots, just there uh, was a little bit of colour before, um, just before I started filming, but uh, it's not really happened. Uh, it was forecast to come in cloud, but not till two o'clock in the morning. It's obviously arrived a bit early. So I'm going to get uh, off to bed, get my head down, and then let's see what it's like in the morning. Hopefully, this thunder and lightning might arrive. He says, hopefully. This was an image that turned out a bit better than I thought. I processed it with a very soft palette try and emphasize the hues in the sunset. It came out rather nice. This is the number of midges on the outside of the tent. If you think I'm getting out for a piss in the middle of the night with all this lot out there, waiting to eat me alive like piranhas, it ain't happening. Okay, it's been woken up by thunder and lightning. So this is this is not a good idea really, but huh. whoa! Holy shit! That is lightning. I'm trying to get set up with the lightning trigger on. This is not a good idea, but uh this is the last you see of me. At least I died doing what I love. There's been a couple of amazing lightning bolts, which unfortunately I haven't caught yet, I don't think, but because uh, I've been in the wrong spot, but I'm just praying. There is a scene in front of me, believe it or not. I'm trying to get a lightning strike and then I'll do a 30 second exposure for the foreground. It's just starting to rain a bit. I'm just studying my undercrackers at the minute, which is not a pleasant sight, and it's starting to rain. Ow! Well, I think I am officially mad. Um, I went back to bed, having tried to get some lightning, and really struggled because it's so bright. And I just kept blowing them out, even though I kept um, getting the shutter speed shorter and shorter. But um, just got myself head down again, and of course it started again. So I had to come out again. It's now two o'clock in the morning. Um, oh, that's the trigger for going off. Light paint this foreground for the tree. There's a little tree in front of us here, but uh, yeah, mm, it's a real hitty missy type exercise. This. Uh, oh, do you see that there in the back of the camera? Didn't set the trigger off, but uh, 
the sort of broader stuff doesn't tend to set it off. Uh, I think I've got it set about right now. I'm actually down to a tenth of a second. Uh, it's been blowing out the pictures that much. So, um, yeah, I'm just stood here in my shorts in the middle of the summer. <laughs> about as dishevelled as uh, Boris Johnson this morning. Um, I was up till uh, I think about half three shooting lightning, just kept coming through. It was a bit mad actually, I was just over there, stood on the top of a mound, probably not the best place to be shooting lightning, trying to find a few different compositions as the lightning went all round. Uh, it was really tricky actually, it's the first time I've actually used the uh, Pluto lightning trigger in anger uh, and trying to get to grips with it and eventually um, I managed to get the trigger working fine, but the trick was trying to get the correct exposure because it just kept blowing the shots out. What I'd done in, when I'd been in America shooting lightning, I was generally shooting about three, four seconds and it seemed to work fine. But last night, the, the bolts were just so bright compared to the darkness, it was just blowing it out at that sort of speed and I ended up down at about a tenth of a second. Anyway, happy galaxy breakfast. Hmm. Yeah, so, um, not a lot of sleep. Did set the alarm for sunrise, I promise. I was absolutely lashing it down. So, I could hear it pelting on the tent. Whoa, forgot to say, if I did get any lightning shots, you're about to see them now. I was disappointed with all these shots. I must have knocked the focus ring on the camera at some point. They were all slightly out of focus, which was really annoying. Um, but you get an idea what the conditions were like from the lightning strikes. But overall, a very exciting experience. Right folks, that's me back at the car. Um, the end of this little adventure. Um, and a few images. Um, no world beaters, I don't think. Some of the lightning shots might be interesting if they work out. It is a big if, because I think a lot of them are blown out. But um, we'll see how they pan out. You probably all already have seen them. You probably know before I do. Um, so that's... Um, was exciting and something I've never done before in terms of camping out um, when it's been in conditions like that. Um, most of this was shot on the mobile phone, um, the, the vlog, um, so I'm interested to see how that's panned out, how the sound is, how the, uh, the visuals look, uh, just to make sure that's a viable option going forward. Um, but until next time, stay safe. <laughs>